Kung Fu talent changes. Welcome back to another Bit Legend video. Let's jump right into it. So, like the last one with the NG, I am going to show the Kung Fu build just to kind of give reference and a little bit of context to uh, what's going on with these changes and updates. You can find the picture without the Kung Fu build overlapped on it um, in the talent video, or excuse me, in the talent channel in the Discord. Um, you can also find it in the talent video if you want. Um, but you can also find this there. So, all the, all the talent stuff in the talent channel. Let's, let's get to it. So. There have been some updates to the Kung Fu Master. This one's short and sweet, so let us get into it. The first thing that has changed, most of this has been to buff the DPS stuff, and um, DPS Kung Fu Master just hasn't been popular enough for me to have a build up. That's why there's only the Kung Fu Tank one. But maybe with these changes, we'll start to see the Kung Fu DPS shine a little bit. So first, thing that was updated was in the middle line, so we're skipping right down to the second line. Um, first hand wins has been increased. It maxed out at 30%. It will now max out at 75%. That's big. I'm going to give you guys a second. I'm going to sip on some water. I've been talking a lot. I'm probably still going to cough, but uh, anyways, it's, it's fine. So the first attack in each battle increased by 75%. When I read that, the first thing I think about is PvP. Kind of. Probably better in raids than PvP now that I think about it. Because the problem with PvP is Kung Fu Master does not start with SP. So your first attack is going to be a zero attack, zero SP attack. Um, and so it's like, hooray, you got, you did a bunch of damage on your zero SP attack that probably hit a reflect tank that probably reflect killed you. <laughs> so maybe that's not great in PvP. But if you talk about raids, Okay, raids are something where everyone's doing so much damage that the first attack, after like the first battle, you know, you're going into your second battle, you got a little bit of SP going, um, then you're really snowballing. And so that first attack, you've got some SP, uh, let's say it's like a goblin fight, or let's say it's like the raid boss fight. You're going in there, you're gonna pop off a big skill. Maybe it's an ultimate ability that we'll talk about a little bit later. 75% damage on that first hit. That could be a big deal. In PvP, eh, I, I think I explained that well enough. Um, but in like raids, that's interesting. The same thing with guild boss, though. You're rolling into the guild boss or the world boss or the bounty boss, whatever they're calling them this week. Um, again, with no SP. So your first attack is going to be a basic attack. No big deal. Now, if you watch the previous NG video, there it is possible for an NG with a bunch of speed to give out a little bit of SP. So maybe you'll see some synergy there. But um, I think it's a good change. But, you know... I think the limiting factor is going to be SP gain for all of the different builds. So let's uh, let's continue. Number two, the probability of impulse. Let's find impulse. It's at the second column. The probability of impulse increased from 30 to 75 percent. So what does impulse do? SP gets a 75 percent chance to increase by 10. Hmm. This one's interesting because we've seen other similar talents that were absolutely better. I think this is the worst out of all of them. Preparation in the Bounty Hunter line, which we'll talk about in the next video, um, gives you two SP, two pips. It's been nerfed a little bit, we'll talk about it, but it still gives like 1.5 pips of SP or 15 SP, whatever you, whatever way you like me saying that. Um, so it's in, this, it's in a second column, it's still twice as good as this. It's still twice as good as this. Why did they not increase the amount of SP? You have a 100% chance to get 1.5 pips of SP from Bounty Hunter. And then in the NG line, you have a 100% chance to get one SP, but it's in the fourth column. I'm not saying nerf Hunter, and I don't want it to sound like that. I'm saying make these better. Impulse has got to be better, man. 70% chance to get an SP per, per turn. I'm assuming it's per turn. Is there any way to think that's not per turn? 
yeah anyways so it's a it's a buff it's an improvement i do like them making small moves and not some massive like now it gives 10 sp or 10 or you know 10 pips of sp but it's still inferior it's still the worst one out of all of them and that might be the limiting factor on a dps build with, with kung fu hmm briskness at the last column here it's actually the fourth column but the picture's kind of squished in a little bit um briskness it says the effect of briskness is increased from 2.5 to 3.5 percent i'm going to assume that's all of these because each one of these damage hit points and speed they all cap at 2.5 i guess they have all been moved to 3.5 that's cool it's cool. It's a fourth column talent. It should be strong. I don't see that game breaking. I think you're just getting some good bonuses out of that. Um, mana resonance. I looked for this one because when when this was first posted, they actually they accidentally used all the names from the previous language update, and they have since um, they removed all that and went back to the old names, which was good. They should have gone back. Um, but I couldn't find a single talent called mana resonance i think the closest thing is storming and we'll talk about storming but let me just double check there is nothing called mana resonance however it says mana resonance increased from five percent to ten percent so we can look through here and find okay what talents are five percent and storming is a five percent talent and the other ones don't make any sense and these are kind of done in order anyways it's got to be storming so Instead of getting 10% damage, you're getting, or instead of getting 5% damage, you're getting 10% damage. Okay. All right, I'll take it. And then the biggest one, at least for me, and not just because I'm a tank, but just as far as looking at all these things, the biggest change for Kung Fu Master is in the bottom row, bottom column, bottom line, the effect of emergency shield is increased from 35% shield to 50% shields. And the number of times it can be used is increased from one to two. So that's massive. Also, they, this picture is actually correct, but um, a couple, like two updates ago, maybe it was like one update ago, they changed the SP cost on emergency shield. Originally it was zero SP, then it was 20 SP. Now it's back down to zero. So you have a zero SP cost you can shield your team for 50%, and you can use it twice per battle. That is huge. That's really, really big. Um, but let's talk about that in context. So if you're doing the tank build, the you know the passive tank versus the active kung fu tank, the only difference is you're just getting emergency shield, and you're giving up 1.5% damage reduction if you look over here. You're going to give a little bit of damage reduction, and you might actually be capped out anyways, because um, 70% 70, 70 is not that difficult to cap. Um, and you're coming over here, you're getting emergency shield. So as a tank, making it zero SP was an awesome change because if you're only getting one turn in per fight, um, you know, you would only be able to use it every other fight in that case. So reducing the SP was amazing. Upping the shield percentage is also good. And then making it usable twice per battle makes this a fairly attractive ability, not only for tanks in the same situation I just described, but also for support slash DPS players. You're getting in more turns if you're just taking a ton of damage, such as uh, like Guild Boss 4 or other similar content. Maybe you're having a hard time in uh, fighting World Boss Adam. You have the option of more shields. The only little caveat to that is there are weapons in the game that give a ton of shields. So you might have seen me talk about the Photon Saber, um, the, the Raid Mythic Sword from Raid 6, Upheaval Sword, whatever it's called. Those, they have a 3 SP Heal and Shield Team ability that caps your entire team because everybody has a bunch of crit, everybody has a bunch of damage bonuses. So that's what you're competing against. Now, what's in favor of the Kung Fu tank is that this costs zero SP, so it's cheaper. And if you have this ability, you can use whatever ability you want. So let's say you didn't like the, the saber. You didn't want to use the saber. Maybe you don't have the saber. Um, you could use any weapon you want, and you would still have this ability available to you. So very interesting. 
Um, was there any other Kung Fu changes that I missed? Okay, yeah, I missed a big one. Sword Rain cannot be dodged or absorbed. So let's go back to it. How did I almost miss one of the biggest things for DPS folks? Let me just double check, see if I missed anything else. Okay, we're good. Sword Rain, in the second line, the ultimate ability. Is the SP cost still 40? Hmm. So let's read it. SP cost 40, summon sword, knife, spear, battle axe, and other weapons to attack the target enemy, dealing 400% damage. Holy damage. I don't know if holy damage means anything. Maybe holy damage just means that you can't use a damage bonus on it. So if you have a bunch of photon damage, it, it won't work for this skill. That's my assumption. Um, but you're doing 400% to of attack power. And it, originally, it would ignore damage reduction and block. Now they're also going to make it ignore dodge and absorb. So it still can be reflected, because reflect is not listed. Then it's like on one hand you want kung fu to have something that's really appealing on the other hand do you want to completely nullify tanks you know if gvg really gets competitive or if we're talking about um pvp kind of stuff i don't think tanks need any more negatives than they already have in those kind of scenarios so i'm, I'm on the fence on this one a little bit the SP cost is high. You can only use it once. Yes, it can still be reflected. Um, but if you're, if you're going to say, well, I'm worried about this ability, so as a tank, I'm just going to get a ton of reflect, pets can, pet damage cannot be reflected. So now you're more vulnerable to pets if all of your defensive is, uh, is in reflect. So mm, I don't know. I think all the DPS players that use this are going to say it's too weak. I think all the tanks that get hit with this thing are going to say it's too strong, and it's just going to be ability like that. So we'll have to see how that one pans out. But 40 SP is super expensive when you do not have good SP gain skills, and I don't think it's reasonable to expect to have an NG speed build always available to you. Maybe you got a cool friend that's running that build. I do think there is value in being that, that guy who just runs different builds instead of everybody running the same thing. So we've seen some improvements here. Is this enough to make people start to say, okay, well, you know, I've been bounty hunter for a while. Let me try something different. Do I want to go out and test out Kung Fu damage? Or if you're a new player and you're, you're watching video guides and you're trying to figure out um, what, what way you want to go to have some smooth sailing, is Kung Fu going to be that option for you? Right now, I'd say, mm, I guess you got you to gotta watch that Bounty Hunter video. As always, I appreciate you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. I can't click the button.